I am Auntie Sally. I am the Hawaii Island Coordinator for the Hawaii Public Health Institute. So what that means is I get to create and go around and educate people about health issues. I do a lot of what's called prevention work. Prevention means I want to give you education so you can make a good decision to prevent long-term health problems. Because in, in the health field, 90% of what we do when we treat somebody who's sick is based on the choices of what they've done to themselves. So today we're going to talk about vaping, doping, ripping, electronic smoking devices. So we're going to spend about 25 minutes um, in this PowerPoint presentation. And the reason I want you to take notes is because I'm going to give you some facts and figures that are going to be answers on a game that we play. And if your team wins the game, you get an extra prize, OK? So um, the only thing I ask, just because I'm super busy and I do a lot of work around Hawaii Island, and I'm actually supposed to, I'm going to miss tomorrow because I have to be at the mayor's office, is that there's not a lot of side conversations because that's very distracting when we get going. But I do want you to participate because I'm going to ask questions. So when I ask you guys a general question, you all can shout out the answers. That's all good. And we're videotaping this today, this presentation, first time ever I videotape my presentation because other classes get to see it tomorrow. Okay, you guys ready to go? Okay, can we possibly, I, if you guys don't mind, dim the lights a little bit for the front and we'll get started. Okay, so why is this a big deal? These numbers are from 2014 and 15. These numbers are up even higher. So in 2014, 3 million middle school and high school students in the past 30 days had used an electronic smoking device, an e-cigarette. Those are more like 5 million now. There's over 250 e-cigarette brands, and 18 million were exposed to um, e-cigarette ads. How many of you guys have seen or heard a vaping commercial or an ad? OK, where have you guys seen it at? Radio. You've heard it on the radio. Where else? TV. Any place else? They're really popular. How about YouTube? If you YouTube it, you can see all kinds of vape information. So we're going to play a quick game. Because of all of those advertising, there's a lot of, of words out there. There's a lot of ideas out there around um, vaping if it's, um, and what the advertising tells you about it. So if you think this statement is true, you say fact. If you think it's a lie, you say myth. OK, the first one. Um, smoking or vaping electronic smoking devices are safe. What do you think? Myth or fact? Myth. Okay. You guys are right. And here are some of the health issues linked. And these are linked right now as a teenager to vaping. Bronchitis, it triggers asthma, pneumonia, it weakens your immune system so you have throat and um, nose irritation, and you're 50% more likely to have a cardiovascular disease or have a heart attack. I'm going to give you a couple of real stories that happen here on the Big Island. Pneumonia. Pneumonia is like having bronchitis, but it's in one lobe of your lung. And it's, it just sits there. And it takes over that area. You have high fevers. You can't breathe. You can't get out of bed. If you don't treat it, you could die. With pneumonia, if you don't treat it quick enough and it gets into your bloodstream, that bacteria that causes that infection in your lung goes into your blood, gets to your other organs, and it causes sepsis. Sepsis is deadly. Once sepsis is detected in your bloodstream, you have three hours, four hours to live. Hilo Medical Center has some of the highest rates of sepsis in the state. That means a lot of people don't treat a, an infection in their body quickly. They don't get to the doctor in time. So there's a sepsis protocol at the hospital. There was a sixth grader at Waikia Enter just last January vaping. She missed a month of school because she had pneumonia. Now, children usually get treated for sicknesses because if the families can see there's something wrong, they get them to a doctor. But I just want you to know that's a potential health risk. And then another one told to me last May, remember when the eruption started on the volcano? Well, I had to go to Honolulu, and I flew over with a doctor from Waimea. And she told me this story about a 15-year-old boy out of probably Honoka'a High. The mom brought him to um, her urgent care, and... The mom um, wanted the doctor to talk to him about his health. He was coughing, he was wheezing, and he wasn't listening to his mom. So the doctor asked him, what have you been doing differently for the last, like, three months? He goes, I've been using an e-cigarette. 
as he was in her office, he was coughing so hard she grabbed a cup so he could cough into it, thinking he might have pneumonia or bronchitis, cough something up. He coughed up a portion of his lung. So we're starting to see lung damage and lung tissue to, to teenagers on the Big Island. That's very serious. She referred him to North Hawaii Hospital to a specialist. So we're starting to see serious health risks already. Okay, next um, question. E-cigarettes do not contain nicotine. Myth or fact? You guys are right. Super smart. You know, a lot of the e-juices um, before the last couple of years, you, you know, they were similar in size. A lot of the products you had to fill, they weren't already pre-filled. There were some that looked like cigarettes, but they weren't as popular as ones that just came on the market. But all of the e-juices and all the e-cigarettes are the most popular, the ones that are sold the most, all contain nicotine. And why would it be beneficial to the vape industry to have a product that had nicotine? What does nicotine do? Gets you hooked up. You're addicted to it. So you start bringing them to school. You start vaping on campus. You start getting suspended. You don't care. The vape industry is not concerned about your health. All they want is your money. So they're going to put product in there that will make your body crave it, and you'll do whatever you can to get it. So are they regulated by the FDA? I want you to write down FDA. Um, Mr. Matsuyama, do you have a dry erase marker? If we could possibly put on the board FDA, FDA stands for Food Drug Administration. So you can write Food and Drug Admin. And this is a federal agency that's supposed to make sure that everything we put in our body or on our body or we breathe or around is safe. So do you think the Food and Drug Administration regulates e-cigarette industry? You can write it right on the side. Food and Drug Administration. What do you guys think? Myth or fact? You would, it's a partial fact, but for the most part, it's a myth. The only thing they regulate right now is the advertising of them. They cannot be advertised on the radio anymore to say they're safer than cigarettes or they help you quit. Because in order to do that, they'd have to prove it through clinical trials. But other than that, the flavors, how they market them, um, how they present them to look like food is not regulated. So what's important for you guys to know is there's no agency making sure that e-juice is safe or those products are safe. And I want you to write this down. Um, 15,500 types of juices. That is a lot to choose from. And those are on the market and they can have whatever the vape company wants to put in it. Okay? So, can e-cigarettes help you quit traditional cigarettes, myth or fact? What do you guys think? Say it loud. Fact. Okay. Most of the people that are switching from an, um, a traditional cigarette to an e-cigarette are in this unsuccessful quitter status, meaning they're still inhaling nicotine and they're still inhaling the product. Do, in, do any of you know somebody who went from a traditional cigarette to an e-cigarette? Raise your hand. Okay, were they able to get off the e-cigarette completely? No. So have they transferred their dependence onto something else? Yes. And what we saw even from like back in 2013 for the last five years, because they were marketed to adults in the beginning to quit, is that they actually got more addicted to nicotine because these products have more nicotine than regular cigarettes. And then are they safe? So we're going to switch over to another area that I want you to think about. They explode. Do you guys know anybody or seen any mods or any e-cigarettes that have exploded? Where, where have you seen it? Okay. So his cousin saw one and it was sparking. He flew it into the couch. Did the couch catch on fire? No. Oh, that's good. Blew the bottle. I bet it scared him though, thinking that could have been his mouth. Anybody else seen the explosions? Well, check this guy out. He was an athlete, um, strong bodybuilder, weightlifter. His e-device blew up, went to the back of his throat, and broke two vertebrae. 
This boy went to a mall just a few years ago before we changed the laws. Even teenagers, even young people up to like seven years old could go to a kiosk and try an e-cigarette. They were unregulated even for trying them. So he went, the very first time he ever vaped, the mod blew up and um, he is now blind in one eye. I was in Honolulu the day this happened, an e-cigarette turned on automatically in luggage and the cargo part of the plane caught on fire while the plane was in the air. So they had to do an emergency landing. So now e-cigarettes are banned from um, being able to be packed in your luggage. And then check this out. See if you can see the cloud. So this e-cigarette was in his pocket. A lot of guys like to wear the cargo jeans, automatically turned on and exploded. So I don't show you the whole thing because I show this to middle schoolers, but he goes out the door and they actually pull down his pants and his leg is burnt really bad. Um, this happened here on Hilo at the Air National Guard. Um, there was somebody that brought their e-cigarettes to work in their military pants. They're called BDUs, shaking them around, turned on, and it caught on fire. So they're banned at the unit. So just be mindful, they do turn on automatically. Ms. Pana told me a quick story here last year. We flew to Honolulu together. We're talking stories. She said somebody had a pop-up shop on campus. He was trying to sell e-cigarettes, and he put it on Instagram. Well, he got busted. And they collected all his devices, and they took it to her office, and they were in her drawer. She didn't know what these were. Security came downstairs and said, you know what? You need to take, get rid of those e-cigarettes. Make sure all the batteries are out. She's like, why? He goes, because they can explode. And sure enough, she, she opened her drawer, and some of the devices were on. So that, that was a potential for a fire right here on campus. And then lastly, at Hilo, I mean, at Waikea High, the two of them have exploded. One went over U building, which is a two-story building. I'm sorry, Q building, two-story building. And then another one, a, t a sophomore was changing the batteries and exploded and hit the student next to him, and that student went to the hospital. And then just last um, December in Pearl City, did you guys see this story on KGMB News? Okay, the e-cigarette, he got out of his car, was going to go play basketball, had a big old mod, um, took a couple rips off of it. It exploded in his hand, and it just projectile from his hand, melted against the fence, and broke his face. At least four to six teeth, both in the top and the bottom part of his jaw, were broken. They showed it on TV. It's still on their archives. But they're very dangerous because these, just like the juice, are unregulated and they can explode. So all of these with the mouthpieces, be very careful because those become the projectile parts. These batteries get very, very hot, just like um, the lithium batteries in your phone. Do you guys ever get on your phone for a while and it gets hot, play games or something? That's because you're overusing it, it's overheating. Also, these parts start to melt. So you have a micro compressor here, you have metal pieces here. So you're not just vaping the e-juice, you're vaping the actual device. So be mindful of that. That's going into your lungs. Your lungs have no way of filtering that out. What you breathe in goes right into your bloodstream. So anybody seen these? Number one e-cigarette on your campus. At almost every single one that's been confiscated that I have, because your principles give them to me, are these. But these are really dangerous. This is where the e-juice goes in. I had these in plastic bags, and it, the e-juice leaks through the bag. And that e-juice is poisonous. Liquid nicotine is very poisonous. So I don't even handle them, because the bags, how could something that's contained in a plastic thing leak through another plastic bag. So we show these kind of things to parents so they know what they look like. Why is that I don't know. I think because probably it was students saw other students have it. So they're like, oh, I want to get that one. Or it could be there's a certain vape shop that sells it, and that's the one that the other students know about. So they just get the same one. Because this is the number one um, e-device at Waikea. All over the parking lot, you're going to see these pods. These, are, these have less of a cloud than the other devices, but they're preloaded with flavor. And I, got, I want to tell you, be very, very careful of these pods. 
these EPODs, they could say um, 3% nicotine or 30 milliliters. This is equal to a pack of cigarettes. And a lot of students will start with this and feel like, oh, that was, that's no, no big deal. I'll do two. I'll do three. These ones, 5% or 50 milliliters, are equal to two packs of cigarettes. And they're coming out with a new 8% one, which is up to four packs of cigarettes, almost five. We had a student at Waikia High just last, I think, May, OD on nicotine. Her eyes were rolling in the back of her head. Her heart was beating out of her chest. She was having heart palpitations. And she could have had a heart attack right there on campus, and they had to call 911. Also, these devices are not supposed to be refillable. Um, a student at Kona Waina last month refilled it with marijuana oil and passed out at school, and they had to call 911. So your principals are really concerned about this. So they're making this their number one concern. But what else is inside e-juice? How many of you have heard it's just propylene glycol and vegetable glycerin? They say it a lot on the advertising. It's like, what's the big deal? You have these things in your food. Your digestive tract is way different than your lungs. And if you only had these two products in your e-juice, you would be making formaldehyde. Because once you heat those up, even with a battery, you're vaping formaldehyde. Formaldehyde causes um, convulsions, neurological disorders, cancer. So you guys are already filling your body with, with um, the potential to have cancer as a young age. And what else does propylene glycanol do? It has toxicity to the kidneys and liver, it, skin irritation, allergic reaction, respiratory issues, cardiovascular, which is heart problems. These are very potential bad, bad health effects. But Nicotine at high doses can cause nausea, vomiting, seizures, and it's toxic to the central nervous system. Guess who is getting that? Children, babies, preschoolers, toddlers, because they are touching e-juice that's oozing out of the bottles and they're getting toxic. The way that they market the e-juice, it looks like food now. So if a baby grabs something that looks like food and it's liquid, like gummy bear juice or apple juice, but it's actually e-juice and they drink it, they have the potential to die. And that happened in 2014. A one-year-old in New Jersey grabbed their parents' e-juice, drank it, because it's in a small bottle, looks like a bottle, and died. I just want to let you guys know, in the United States, we don't have the safety factors for selling things like other countries. In Europe, you have to prove something safe before you can sell it, not here. It, they do not sell e-juice in Australia. They do not sell e-juice in Brazil, in Panama. In many countries in Europe, it's way different than in the United States because liquid nicotine is a poison. And so if you guys are around somebody who's vaping, don't hold on to their device for them. Don't hold on to their e-juice for them. It's, if you touch it and it gets in your skin, you can get really sick. So if you feel weird after touching e-juice, you could, now you know why. Write down this word, diacetyl, D-I-A-C-E-T-Y-L. This is another chemical that's common in e-juice. It's a sweetener. It's used to flavored e-liquids. In 2015, I was teaching across the street um, at Hilo Inter, and this study came out about um, they studied 51 different um, flavors of e-juice. 47 of them had high levels of diacetyl. They just randomly grabbed 51 flavors. Not, it wasn't from one company. What's scary about diacetyl is it causes this disease called bronchial obliteration. So when something obliterates, what happens? It's destroyed. Blow up. How many of you guys like fireworks? New Year's, get to blow some junk up, right? My husband's favorite holiday. Well, that's what happens to your lungs. And this happened to eight factory workers at a popcorn factory. They all were um, exposed to high levels of diacetyl, and they all lost lung tissue. The only treatment for this, they call it popcorn lung because they work for a popcorn factory instead of bronchiolitis obliteration, is a full lung transplant. 
you can't get your lung tissue back. We can't sew it back together. It's not like a broken bone that you can reset. It's gone. And so the only way to, to heal that is somebody would have to die and this person would have to get their lungs. Very rare to get a lung transplant. They don't happen in the state of Hawaii. You have to go to the mainland. Your out-of-pocket cost for a surgery like this, just for the transplant, $1 million. And that's with insurance. What scares me is, you know that boy that was 15 years old that coughed up a portion of his lung? Maybe he started having problems with his upper lung tissue and was losing his lung. Maybe he started to have popcorn lung. How many of you guys like to go surfing or snorkeling or be in the ocean? Have you guys ever swallowed water and kind of choke a little bit? Okay, that's called wet lung. Can't breathe very good. We see wet lung a lot in 19 and 20 year olds that have been vaping. When you guys vape, you inhale much deeper, you keep it in longer, you blow fat clouds, but it has all these potential health risks. So why are they vaping? I'm gonna ask you a straight question. My middle school students, when I talk to them, and I talk to hundreds, they don't like to admit they're vaping. My high school students have no problem. But because, you know, it's not, you know, you don't want people to think bad about you, I'm gonna ask you two questions. Answer either one by raising your hand. So let me ask, ask you both. How many of you know somebody that's under the age of 21 that's vaping right now or have you tried an e-cigarette? Just raise your hand. If you know somebody under the age of 21 that's vaping, or that you've tried an e-cigarette, either one, raise your hand. So if you don't have your hand up, then you don't know anybody, you've never tried it. So every hand is up. Okay, down. Why do you think those people under the age of 21, or you yourself, why are they vaping if it's against the law? Anybody? What's that? Say it loud. It's addicting. Very good. What else? Why, are they, why, do, they, or how do, why do they start? to be cool. How old do you think they were when they started? 16. How many of you guys think 10? Middle school. We have seven and eight year olds at Kealakehi Elementary that got busted for vaping last year. They had such a big problem with vaping that they asked us to come in and talk to every single student on campus K through five. Why would seven and eight-year-olds, first of all, get their hands on it, but why would they be vaping? What do you think? What's that? They see the older kids. You were saying because the parents let them. And also the flavors. Let's look at some of these flavors. Who drinks treetop apple juice? Besides us. Like what age? Kindergarten. You know, you pack this for excursions, kids that are in preschool, maybe elementary. But look at this e-juice. This came out last year. It's called a juice box. That's crazy to me. They're not even marketing. It's not even shy. You're definitely marketing to little children. Then we have, you know, Sour Patch Kids, Trolleys. These, they're marketing to you guys here, middle school students. Candy Company. Have you vaped your candy today? Because literally, that's what they're wanting you to do is think of it as candy. How many of you guys like these? My son just took mine. I got some for Christmas. And he's like, I want yours. I was like, oh my gosh. And they make this as e-juice. Now check this out. Nilla wafers, Nilla e-juice. Ready whip. Now can you understand why a baby would grab that if it's in a bottle and drink it? And die? That's crazy. So what else is in e-liquids? All of these products are inside traditional cigarettes. So I'm glad you brought that up. How many of you guys know what third-hand smoke is? Third. third. Okay, what's third-hand smoke? <laughs> Not tree, bro. Okay, third-hand smoke is that smell. You guys ever been in somebody's car? They're not smoking, but you know they're a smoker. How can you tell? It smells. smells. Stink, right? Or their house. Or if you hug them and they just had a cigarette, you can smell it in their hair. All of that is these chemicals. That's third-hand smoke. So this is benzene. Go ahead and write this down. B-E-N-Z-E-N-E, -E -N -E. benzene. Benzene is a chemical that's found in traditional cigarettes. 
This is acetaldehyde, which um, is found in hairspray. Cadmium is in batteries. It, it burns your skin if you touch it. That's why you, we don't throw batteries, especially these um, out. Lead is in traditional um, batteries. Oh, insecticides. All of these have liquid nicotine in them. It's a poison. It kills things. Liquid nicotine kills things. It kills your body. Yes, it's addictive, but it's also a poison. And then isoprene, write this down, I-S-O-P-R-E-N-E, -E, isoprene. It holds all those flavors and, I mean, all those scents inside the um, e-juice. So I give you this one because that's obviously an e-juice because it's the same smells. But are any of these an e-juice? Yes. All of these are. All of these are an e-juice. And that's just a handful. Yes, all of this. You might not smell it. You might not taste it. But it's in there. So this is what's startling to me. In 2013, on the Big Island, I got to run a campaign to raise the age of sale to 21, really to, so high school students would not get addicted to nicotine products. Our vaping rates were so low back then. We were probably had maybe 7% to 12% high school students trying an e-cigarette. In 2015, and it went up to 25%. I'm like, oh, dang, we're going in the wrong direction. Just last year, these are high school students that self-reported that they vape in the last 30 days at least once. Most of them have been vaping 20 days out of 30. Middle school students, 23%. We have 50% of our high school students have at least tried it. Never happened with regular cigarettes. How many of you guys could see yourself actually wanting to smoke a cigarette? They're gross, right? They taste gross. They hurt. They have a back burn against your throat. There's, there's all these things that make it gross. But vaping isn't like that. It doesn't hurt. tastes good. It's not going to hurt me. Well, look at these numbers. High, middle school students on the mainland, only 3%. Just the other day, it went up to 5%. We are 700% higher than the mainland with middle schoolers vaping. That means we are 700% more likely to have kids get sick. And I'll show you the last slide next, but this is what I want you to take away. You are the industry's um, target, and you're also our science. We are going to find out from your bodies how sick you get from vaping, because you're our first generation of longtime users. So if you started vaping in middle school and you still are, we're going to look and see what does it do to your body. I would love for e-cigarettes only to be used by adults to help them quit smoking. But high school students love these. And it scares us in the health field to death because we know something really bad. The potential is there for something really bad to happen. And then lastly, it's so against the law for you guys to be using these products. And other counties are getting very serious about this. So let me break that down for you. You cannot vape or smoke anywhere you, um, indoors. All restaurants, all businesses, everything public is vape free. So make sure you know that, put that in your notes. Also, our cars. Cannot vape or smoke in your car. So Mr. Dirks took one of my banners and it was outside on your fence. Keep me smoke free and vape free is the law. That means you have to, if anybody in the vehicle is under the age of 18, nobody should be smoking or vaping in the car. And um, also, just for other places, on the Big Island, all our beaches, all our parks, all our gyms, all our playgrounds, anything run by the county of Hawaii is vape free, including the parking lot. So your parents shouldn't be standing right outside the door watching you play volleyball or basketball and um, smoking or vaping. It should be out on the um, sidewalk off the property. And then this is the big one for you guys. 21 years old to purchase or possess. So Kauai is getting really strong about this. Kauai school district is a little bit smaller than our school district, less high schools. So every kid that gets caught vaping, first thing is police are called. Second thing, it's taken away, you'll never get it back. Third thing, automatic mandatory Saturday school, four hours, plus your suspension with your parents. And your district, Hawaii district superintendents want to bring that here. And your principals have already said, yes, 
Let's do this. So we haven't implemented it yet, but this might happen even spring semester. So just know, is it worth the risk of bringing this device to school to get busted and you and your parents having to come to Saturday school for four hours? Also, if, um, if you're busted with these, you could lose other things besides just like a day of school and four hours of your time. There was a high school student last year. How many of you guys are athletes wanting to go to college on a scholarship? My daughter's on a scholarship for volleyball. She's graduating in May. Believe me, if you're a good athlete, you want scholarships. So there was a boy, um, I don't know if he was from Hilo or Waikea or Kamehameha schools, but he was a top baseball player. Division one, full ride, $40,000 scholarship. And then he put his vaping videos on his Instagram. Guess what happened to that scholarship? Gone. Coaches pulled it. You are not worth the risk because you're breaking the law, you're underage, and you're already hurting your body. No school is going to give money for that. So just know that it's not just against the law. You could lose some privileges, some great things in your life if you get caught and you keep doing it. 